Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Julius. I'm um, Julius's. I'm um, Julius's song. You got both of them? Huh? You got yeah. both? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to do Xavier's Ray, but nevertheless. You have one minute. Okay, sir. People are coming on Facebook. Okay. Good morning, everyone on Facebook. This is First Lady Anita. We will be starting in less than a minute. And good morning, everyone who is on Zoom. We will be starting in less than a minute. Can y'all hear me? Good. Five. You ready? Yeah. Okay. We're good. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Pastor Wamba once again, um, welcoming you to our virtual service on uh, on, on this Sunday. Um, I would like to ask everyone who is on Zoom to hit star six. Uh, that will put you on mute. Amen. And so as you come in, you're going to have to go on to mute. For those who are on Zoom, you won't be able to see me. Uh, we haven't worked out that one yet, uh, but you will be able, I pray, you will be able to hear me. Amen. Uh, so if there's someone who is on Zoom, there's a couple of people who are un, um, uh, unmuted. And so please hit star six so you can, uh, you can be muted on this morning. I welcome you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I'm just so glad that you were able to join us this morning in the name of Jesus. For all of those who are on Facebook Live, for all of those who are on Zoom, uh, wherever you may be, we have people who are in California and Texas and all over the, the country who are listening to us this morning, and we just, we greet you in the awesome name of Jesus. Uh, I, I come this morning, and I would first like to thank First Lady for a couple of things. I'd like to thank First Lady for her service last week when she brought the word, um, that the sermon, and she taught us so much uh, to encourage us not to give up. And uh, she taught us that uh, even in this pandemic, this is not God's first rodeo. Amen. God has been through this before with his people, and all of his people came out, so we just I give the Lord all glory, and we also learned a lot about ring around the rosy. <laughs> I heard a lot, a lot of you learned, heard from you last week, and you didn't know any. None of us knew anything about what ring around the rosy was really all about. Uh, and as they say, and now you know. Um, uh, we are following the directions of uh, the leaders of our state and also of the Baltimore Washington Conference in the determination of um, when we will open the church back up. Uh, at this time. Um, the, the instructions that we have um, is to open up uh, on May the 15th. Everything is very, very fluid. I don't know if May 15th is going to be the day that we're going to be able to do that, but that's where we are right now. Uh, in, in concerns of the things that we are hearing, I just want to make sure, and I know that all y'all go lie, I want to make sure that none of y'all out there trying to drink Clorox, huh? come on now, trying to sip on some Lysol. I hope y'all not doing that. No matter who tells you to do that, y'all know better. So, uh, so we're just praying that we, uh, we do what we know to do, that we stay safe, that we keep our mask on, that we have gloves, that we do social distancing, and we try to keep ourselves as safe as possible. Also, during this service, I, we do appreciate the comments that are um, given us, particularly those on Facebook Live. Thank y'all so very much. As you comment during the service and during the sermon, it's awesome. So keep that up. We're firing up people who are listening to us. So we just... We just thank you so very much. Um, as I mentioned last week, one of the projects that we are trying to do is we want to um, help those who are on the front lines. And in particular, uh, this week, we're going to um, provide lunch 
for South River Rehabilitation Center. And we have several people who are there, including um, Brother Richard Smith. And so we want to donate a lunch to them. Um, and so we'll give you more information. We're asking everyone if you could just donate $10 toward that. Um, they have about 50 people who are on the staff uh, for that lunch. And so we're trying to get lunch. We're going to be working um, probably with Chick-fil-A uh, to get that lunch done. And so uh, if you could donate... Um, and we're going to let them know that it is coming from the South River Charge, that we, we um, appreciate what they do on the front lines. Um, they are tired and they are weary, uh, but they keep coming to work to serve. So we just give the Lord all glory and all honor and all praise in the name of Jesus. Uh, so we thank you and we bless you and we, we praise you as we get ready to go into um, the, uh, the worship service. Um, we're going to go uh, and we're going to have our call to worship. If you would hold on for just one second. I believe that there are some who are struggling on Zoom. I can see y'all. Uh, I hope that you can hear me. Um, you need to, um, uh, when you go to the... Uh, Mute yourselves, and that's good. And then you can also uh, mute the, the camera as well. So, so as we do every week, we have our call to worship. And there's a line that I need for you to say. Um, and I should have given this to Keisha, but I didn't. My bad. So here's what I need for you to say. Jesus says, come to me. All right? Y'all got that? Jesus says, come to me. So when I call, when I say people, you will say, Jesus says, come to me. Very good, very good, very good. Here we go. Here is, a, here is an invitation for Jesus. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion and things of the world? People? Jesus, Jesus says, says, come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. People? Jesus says, come to me. I'll show you how to take a real rest. People, Jesus, Jesus says, says, come to me. Walk with me and work with me and watch how I do it. People, Jesus says, come to me. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting or ill-fitting on you. People, Jesus says, come to me. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly people Jesus says come, come to, to me. me amen so now here's this opportunity a unique opportunity that we're going to have we're going to try to do this on both uh Facebook and on um and on uh Zoom so here's what I want you to do um on Facebook uh, just uh just write, I want you to type in, come to me and your name. This is the passing of the peace. So type in, come to me and your name. I'm getting ready to unmute Zoom for a second so everyone can greet each other and just say, come to me. Are you ready? All right. Go. Come to Jesus. 
Old Testament reading is found in the book of Isaiah 45, 22 through 25. And it reads, Turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. By myself I have sworn my mouth has uttered in all integrity a word that will not be revoked. Before me, every knee will bow. By my, me, every tongue will swear. They will say of me, in the Lord alone are righteousness and strength. All who have raged against him will come to him and be put to shame. But in the Lord, but in the Lord, all the descendants of Israel will be found righteous and will exalt. The New Testament reading is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. New Testament, Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. There will be mountains that I will have to climb, and there will that I will have to fight, but victory or defeat, it's up to me to decide, but how can I expect to win if I never try? Yeah. 
sermon at this time, uh, and I think that our songs are the two keys for, for where we are right now uh, in this difficult time. Um, as First Lady preached last week, uh, we can't give up now. Um, but also, there, there's uh, a message for us, I believe, that Jesus is, is trying to give us, and I want you to, to, to pay attention, amen, and, and focus on what the Word said. I will be coming um, from the, the, the verses in um, Matthew 11 uh, and verses 28. Thank First Lady for reading for us. And thank her also. She's our camera person and our director uh, and our producer is, is Keisha. Uh, so, so I just <laughs> thank all of the technical people who were there. Um, so, so, so the father was, was standing in four foot of water in the swimming pool. He held his arms out because he, was, he wanted his daughter to jump in. She had been taking swim lessons, and, 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 and she said that she could swim, and she said it was finally time she was ready to take her first jump into the pool, but she wanted her father to be there. And so, so as he stood in the water with his arms uh, open wide for her to jump, she stood on the edge of the swimming pool, but she did not move. She was hesitant to do something that she had never done before. But the father said, come on, baby, just jump. I will, I will catch you. Uh, but she's, she was frozen. She, she seemed to be in the midst of fear. And, and so the father was getting a little bit frustrated. But he said, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait on my baby. I know that she's going to jump. And so he said, come on, baby. Come on, you told me that you could swim, and you told me you were ready to jump on in, and, and so I, I'm just here for you, and I will catch you. But she still did not move. It was like there was a heavy weight that was holding her down. In our Matthew 11 scripture this morning, Jesus is talking to his people who are also frozen, people who are weighted down. A weight is preventing them from being uh, who God has called them to be. And Jesus uh, wants to assure them that, that the answer to their problems, uh, their heavy burden and their weariness is, is, is if they understand what could help them eliminate all of their anxiety and their doubt and their fear. Jesus had the solution for his disciples then, and I believe that he has the solution for us now because we are the ones who have such anxiety and doubt and fear in the midst of this pandemic. You see, see, there were those uh, people, and, 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 and they, they understood that going to Jesus was not going to be easy, and so because it wasn't going to be easy, there were people who said, no, I don't want to do it. They Jesus explained to them that, that this journey would not be a pain-free one. And they said, no, 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 I don't want to do it. But Jesus uh, wants all of us to know, and all of us to know that all of those who are willing to follow, their future will be better. So for just a, a little while this morning, I, I want to give you simple advice that came from Jesus. I want to issue a simple uh, invitation that Jesus made that he said that I'm gonna, if, you, if you understand and if you, if you answer this calling, everything will be so much better in your life. And so this morning, I'm going to bring you just a, a brief sermon on the title, Come to Me. Come to Me to me. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come on this morning listening, listening for you, Lord God. Listening for a word that will lift us up. Listening for a word that will inspire us. Listening for a word, Lord God, that will help us on this journey in the most difficult time in a lifetime. So, Lord God, I ask that you would be with me. I ask that you would hide me behind the cross and use me as an instrument, Lord God. An instrument to deliver your word to your people, that they will be different after they hear this than they were before. This is my prayer in the awesome name of Jesus, we pray and say, Amen. Amen. 
So as we look at Matthew, the 11th chapter, and we started with the 28th verse, Jesus knew that his disciples and the people who were following him were frustrated and tired. As we know, the Jews were going through. They were living under Roman rule, and, 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 and most of them were extremely poor, and they were overtaxed. And those who had the nerve to follow Jesus, it was even worse because they were ostracized and set apart by even their family members. In addition to that, they were trying to live this life, and, and they were trying to follow the Pharisees who were the religious leaders of the day, but the Pharisees made everything so difficult with all of their rights and laws and regulations. It was so hard to keep the law. And when we talk about the law, we're talking about the law of Moses, those Ten Commandments. But out of the Ten Commandments, the, the, the Pharisees and others had looked at those and made all kinds of other rules and regulations and laws that made it so difficult to live a life. They, they made it difficult as they talked about the Sabbath and divorce and oaths and tithing and the ritual of purity. Things were just so many, so difficult. They were throwing so much stuff at the people that they just couldn't do it. Matthew 23 and 23 through 24 says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you, you mint, you tithe mint and, and dill and cumin, and you have neglected the weightier propositions of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. But these things you should have done without neglecting the others. You blind guides, you who strain out a net, and swallow the camel. What, gee, what they were saying was, you were giving me so much, but, but what, the, what the Pharisees were doing is they were looking at the law and they were twisting it to fit into their life. They were making it better for them. Last week, you know, we have a lot of time uh, during, uh, <laughs> during this pandemic, and so the family decided that we were going to watch the Clark Sisters movie. Uh, I, I suggest that if you have you can get it on your TV, it's a great movie particularly those who like who love singing. The Clarks and the sisters are awesome. But there was a scene, and, and because they were in Church of God in Christ, and as many of you know, uh, First Lady and I were raised in Church of God in Christ, we understood this. Um, uh, the, uh, the mother, uh, Maddie Moss Clark, uh, she, uh, one of her daughters came over her house, and she had pants on. And, and uh, the mother would not allow her daughter into her house because she had pants. Because in the Church of God in Christ, uh, growing up, uh, women did not wear pants. I, I, I'll tell you that I, I, had ne I never in all of my life saw my mother wear a pair of pants. Because as one who was in the Church of God in Christ, it was a rule that they made up, that they made into law that women could not wear pants. Women couldn't wear pants, weren't supposed to wear makeup, we couldn't listen to secular music. We weren't supposed to go to the movies. There were all these laws that were made up. And, and it was made up by man and not by God. And that's what the Pharisees had done. And they made life so very difficult. And Jesus could see that when his people were just tired. Things weren't going well anyway. And now there's all these rules and regulations that were burning them down. But Jesus gave them an invitation that would make things better. He said, come to me because my burden is easy and my yoke. Is light. So, so, so here's what was going on. Jesus took, took all of these rules and regulations, and if you want to see all the laws, go to the book of Leviticus, and you can see all the things that man did with the law of Moses. Uh, but Jesus was going to make it simple. He boiled everything down to just two rules, two commandments. And he said this in, in Matthew 22, 37 through 40, and the basic is, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. These are the two things that, that Jesus says, I'm, I'm going to make it easy for you, but, 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 but maybe he didn't make it easy at all. Because loving God is not always easy. And now, now we say it's easy, and I, I didn't know, oh, no, no, Pastor, I love God, I, I love God all the time, but, but, but you see, but see, I, I understand that, that we have to admit that when things happen in our lives, when things happen in our lives, uh, when, when people are dying, or family is hungry, or loved ones decide to leave us, or we lose a job, or we lose our house, and we, or we get sick, and things aren't going well, you so it's a time, it's a time that, 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 Sometimes we, we lose our love for God and we wonder, where is this God who was supposed to love me? 
And loving our neighbors, oh, oh, help me, Jesus, that's not easy either. Uh, how can I love someone who has talked about me, lied on me, stole from me, mistreated me, hated me, walked right past me, looked down on me, never acknowledges me? You see, I, I understand that Jesus made it simple by making two rules, but these were difficult too to love God. And our, our responsibility is to love God at all times, whether it's good or bad. We need to love God because God is on our side. We need to understand that and we have to love our neighbor. The Bible even tells us that we have to love our enemies. You know, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do. Especially it's not easy when so many are, are living that life on the edge. They're living as lukewarm Christians. They're still trying to do all the things in the world, but uh, occasionally they acknowledge Jesus as their Lord and Savior. See, we have grown accustomed to, to being Christians, but keeping all of our bad habits. Uh, oh, I'm talking to somebody this morning. Those are our, our sins, uh, and, and, and we think it's okay just because God keeps waking us up every single morning. You see, the only time many of us get serious about God is when we get sick or somebody around us gets sick and all of a sudden then we want God. Other than that, we're living this lukewarm life that makes it so very difficult. And when we live a lukewarm life, what we're doing is we are inviting all of these burdens of the world upon us and making life so very difficult and frustrated. And we are burdened by anxiety and doubt and fear and worry. Come on, Pastor. You see, I, I want you to know this. This morning that God does not continue to wake you up so that you can wallow in this same old mess. I came by this morning on your phone and on your computer, and for some of you, you all even put it on the TV, but I, I came by this morning that, that, that God woke you up to give you another day so that you can turn from your ways, turn uh, to Jesus, that you can come to him another day that he hopes that you will understand that you don't have to carry all the heavy burdens. Another day that God hopes that you will not continue to live in a sin that is killing you and weighing you down and burdening you. Another day that you will not be, be plagued by worry and anxiety and you cannot sleep and you can't do the things that you're supposed to do because you believe that, 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 that the world is crashing down on you. But God is saying, come to me yes. and I will give you rest. God is saying in the name of Jesus that you're looking at the wrong things. Come on. When you're looking at CNN, you mm -hmm. should be in the Bible. You're looking at the wrong things. And so the invitation this morning, saints of God, is Jesus is saying, come to me. Yes. You see, people are turning to all kinds of different things during this pandemic. And you see the, the grocery stores and the liquor stores, are, the liquor stores are doing great business during this pandemic. <laughs> Because more of the people are turning to the bottle than they are turning to Jesus. But Jesus is saying, come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me those who can't sleep anymore. Come to me for those who are ruled by anxiety. Come to me all who are putting on a bold face but really shaking in fear. Come to me all who are trying to drink the days away. Mm, mm, what you are looking for cannot be found in a bottle. It can't be found in a smoke. It can't be found in, in an appeal. It can't be found in anything but in the word of God. And so Jesus is issuing an invitation to all those who are worried, all those who are burdened, all those who are, who are not feeling like they know they should be feeling. He's saying, I know where you are, but what you need to do is come to me. Come on. He says, come to me and I will give you rest. So what is this rest that Jesus is talking about? The rest means, the Greek word means to be refreshed. Come to me and I'll calm you down. See, see, hallelujah, come on, Holy Spirit. Some of, some of y'all just getting too excited about what's going on. Mm, come on, watch this. Holy Spirit said, don't, don't be watching 45 and getting all upset and getting all mad. Jesus says, come to me. Come to me and I'll recharge your batteries. Come to me and I will lead you beside the still waters and I will restore your soul. Come to me and I will give you rest. I'll give you rest from all the fear and all the anxiety and all the doubt. Come to me. 
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, come to the secret place of the Most High God. Come to me and allow me to cover you with my feathers so that nothing can harm you. Come to me. We've been spending too much time in the world and all of this time. We have so much time. How are you spending your time? And if you're spending your time in anything that's going to cause you to fear or cause you to doubt or cause you to, to wonder if God is still in control, Jesus is saying, no, that's not where you should be. Come to me this morning. He says, he says, take my yoke. My yoke is easy. Hallelujah. Put it on. Put on my yoke and, 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 and learn from me. You see, see a, a yoke, a yoke, uh, and some of y'all who have worked on a farm, I, I think I think none of y'all didn't have no oxen. Praise the Lord. I hope y'all didn't have no oxen. But but a yoke is put on an oxen as, as they did they did their work in the in the field. It is something that they put over over their neck to control them. Uh, and, and, and so so what Jesus was saying, he said, look, my yoke is easy. Now watch this. I need for you to understand. He he said, My yoke is easy, which means that, that you still have a yoke. Because what a yoke does is a yoke focuses you, oh, come on, Holy Spirit, it focuses you on the work that you have to do. Uh, you see, because if you don't have a yoke, you're, you're running around wild and free and you're doing anything that you want. But Jesus says, if you come to me, hallelujah, uh, the one who created you, the one, the one who, who has a plan for your life. And the Bible says it's a good plan. If, if you let me put my yoke on you, hallelujah, I will direct you for what you were created to do. <laughs> but here's the thing, he says, I, I want you to learn. And here's what they used to do uh, back in the day when they had an oxen and they were breaking in a new ox. Uh, they, would, they would bring in the oxen and they would have, uh, the, most of the time the yoke were for two animals. They would put a, an experienced animal on one side and the new animal on the other. And the experienced animal, watch this, would bear most of the burden as the young one was trying to learn uh, how do I do what I'm supposed to do. Uh, what do we, I'm really trying to tell you and what Jesus was trying to tell all of those uh, in the name of Jesus uh, who would come to him uh, is that I've got some help for you. Uh, you don't have to bear all of this stuff alone. Uh, and in fact, our Jesus who died on the cross for us, he told his disciples, I've got to die so the Holy Spirit, uh, the helper, the paraclete, the guide will come and help you out. Uh, I, I don't know where you are. Uh, I don't know who might be with you, uh, but I need to do one or two things. Uh, turn to your neighbor. Uh, and if you got, don't have a neighbor, just look at yourself. Just tap yourself on the chest and say this. Jesus gave me some help through the power of the Holy help. Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit, Spirit is with you. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is your help. The Holy Spirit is your strong tower. Preach. The Holy Spirit is there to guide you Come through. The Holy Spirit is there to, to protect you from all of the things that the world is trying to put on your back. The Holy Spirit is there. They said, cast your cares upon me in the name of Jesus. Too many people are tripping and hurting and worrying. And Jesus is saying come to me. I've got some help for you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on. You need to learn how to live this life by reading the word in the name of Jesus and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. One of the problems with the Pharisees is that the Pharisees were telling the people all of these laws and rules and regulations but they weren't helping the people. They weren't helping them to do it. And God is saying, Jesus came and said, look here, I'm giving you some help through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. It is the Holy Spirit that works along in our insides that helps Jesus' burden to be light. Yes. Come to me. You see, uh, Jesus said in Matthew 19 and 14, he was talking to the disciples, were trying to keep the children away from him. And he said, no, 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 allow the children to come. Because it is those who are like these children who will enter the kingdom of God. Why? Why? Because the children, and for those of you who have children or grandchildren, you know your children, when they see you, they just run and jump into your arms. They don't care about any of the stuff that's going on around. A love of a child, a child has complete trust. 
Uh, and so Jesus was saying, I, I need for you when you come to me. I need for you to have complete trust in me. I need for you to have a trust that you believe. You see, mm, come on, Holy Spirit. I took me too often. We as Christians, uh, we just give the Lord lip service. Come on. We talk a good game, but we don't walk a good game. We say that we love Christ, but you're not living like you love Christ. The epitome of coming to me is let go and let God. And see, y'all know it, but I'm asking the question, do you do it? I, I, I know and I understand that I've talked to people and they're in the midst of the struggle and they're in the midst of the struggle because they will not let go and let God. They will not come to God who is saying, I will give you rest. I will give you peace. I will give you joy. I will give you all that you need if you just come to me. And so this morning, I want you to know it is time for us to heed the invitation. Come to Jesus. Yes. This is the time uh, to come and experience rest. Look, if we look at this, look at the time that God has given us. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you ain't driving nowhere. <laughs> For some of us, we ain't doing too much of, of nothing. And Jesus said, what are you doing with the time? Instead of complaining about the places that you can't go, how about going to the place you should go? <laughs> Come to Jesus. Come on. This is the time that we, we seek him earnestly to make the changes that we talked about. Come on, Holy Spirit. Before this pandemic, everybody had something that they wanted to do, something that they wanted to change in their life, something they wanted to move in their life. And God has given us this time to come to him and sit with him and talk to him and walk with him so that he can allow the Holy Spirit to move in you and through you so that you can do great things. You've got the time. Take the time. And Jesus has given you the invitation. Come to Jesus. All right now. John 6 and 37 says, all that the Father gives me will come to me and whoever comes to me will never be driven away. That is John 6 and 37. I think that this invitation may be the call for this particular season. We have drifted from God. We have tried to do things our way. We have forgotten. You see, oh, come on now. When things get to going real good, and we have a job, and we have money, and we have food, and we can come and go as we want, we tend to forget God. We take God for granted. But, but, but now, when things get bad, we are anxious, and we are fearful, and we are afraid, and God is telling us, come to me, and I will give you rest. Aren't you tired of doing it your way? God is saying, look at here, I am the answer. I am the truth. I am the life. God is saying, come to me. I am the answer for your struggles. Won't you come to me? We have given this, been given this unique time in history to come to Jesus. For most of us, we don't have anything but time. Time to seek his face. Time to spend time with him in prayer and say, God, I need you. Lord God, the change that, that I wanted to make in my life, now is the time. Because when all of this stuff is over, uh, uh, the world will engulf us again and we won't have time and we'll be too busy to spend time with Jesus. But now is the time. Take some time, church of God. Take some time, beloved. Take some time, saints of God, in the name of Jesus, and spend some time. Come to Jesus. Allow him to give you rest. Allow him to speak to your spirit. Allow him to make a change in your life. Allow him to mold you and make you. And sometimes he may have to break you, but it's time, church of God, to come to Jesus. Mm. When we left left little Sherry. Sherry was Sherry was on the edge of the pool and she was frozen. Her father was standing in the water with open arms and he was ready to give up because it didn't look like his daughter was going to move. But he smiled and he said one more time come on come to me and had his daughter out of nowhere leaped up into his arms. Church of God, it is time for us to make the leap into the arms of a Jesus who was saying, come to me. Yes. 
I will give you rest. Come Hallelujah. to me. I, I feel your pain. Hallelujah. Come to me. I, I know what's going on Hallelujah. in the family. Come to me. Hallelujah. I know about the hidden burdens. Come to me. I know about the hidden pain. Come to me and I will give you rest. Come to me in the name of Jesus. It's time to make the leap. It's time to make the jump. It's, it's time, church. It's time to come to Jesus. If I was in the church, this would be a time I would have an altar call because I, I feel in my spirit, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, that somebody heard me this morning. Somebody call, heard the call to come to Jesus, understanding that the, the things that they need to stop doing and the things that God is calling them to do. And so this morning, I'm going to have a virtual altar call. Because you know who you are. You know where your spirit is. You know where God has called you to be. And you haven't been doing it. But God is saying this morning, come to Jesus. Yes. Come to Jesus and do the things that God has called, anointed, and appointed you to do. I, I want you in the name of Jesus to come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Come to Jesus that he might change you. And come to Jesus that he might change you forever. And so now we're going to go into prayer. But for those of you who are who would come up this morning because you want God to use you. Some of you, you see, what we're going through at this time is nothing more than a testimony. We're going through a struggle, but we're going to get out of the struggle and you're going to have to tell somebody about what Jesus did for you. Hallelujah. But, but you're going to have to stop doing some things that you have been doing. So it's, it's time to come to Jesus. And so I invite you in the name of Jesus to come to the altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, the altar is in your heart. Come Hallelujah. to the altar and come to Jesus in the name of Jesus so that he will bless you. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come this morning understanding, Lord God, that we need you. Understanding, Lord God, that we have not done all that we're supposed to do. Lord God, we ask that you would just help us during this time to help us to change into who you have called us to be that we have a little bit time. We know it's a struggle, Lord God, but, but the struggle has always been to do something we've never done before, but we are in the midst of a time where we're doing everything that we do we've never done before. But now it's time for us to take the leap, to leap into, leap into your arms, Lord God, to come to you that you might give us rest. Yes. Come to you that you might recharge our batteries. Come to you that you might reshape us and give us new vision for what it is you've called us to do, Lord God. When all of this is over, who will we be? Who will we be? Will we be who we were before? Or will we be who you have called us to be in this time and in this season? Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus right now. Lord God, I ask for all of those whose spirit right now are with you. Who are asking, Lord God, I know that I have not done all that I was supposed to do. I know, Lord God, I have not been obedient. I know, Lord God, that I have not walked the path that you have called me. And now, Lord God, I'm going to turn. But the Bible says that they who turn from their wicked ways, that he will heal the land. So in the name of Jesus, there's some oh, healing that needs to take place in the name of Jesus. And you're going to have to turn off the path where you are in order for Jesus to, to heal you, to, to, to put you where you were supposed to be. And so in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray that everyone, Lord God, who right now is seeking to come to you, Lord God, come to you like children, come to you in total trust, come to you willing to let go and to let God come to you, Lord God, because they are not satisfied with what their life is and they want to live the life that you call them to. Lord God, please, in the name of Jesus, be with them. Be with all of us, Lord God, as we try to be who you've called, anointed, and appointed us to be in this time and in this time. So, Lord God, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. And it is in the awesome name of Jesus that we lift up this prayer. We lift up this prayer, Lord God, and we say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, can you give the Lord a hand praise this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our love God is so good and worthy to be praised. So now is our time um, that we're going to uh, go into our offering. Um, uh, I want to thank you first for all of those who have continued to give. And, and you know, we've heard reports from finance that um, from finance from both of our churches that, that our people are giving. And we, we thank you so very much for that. We ask that you would continue to give because the work of the church does not stop. Uh, and, and we are trying to do some, some great things. Um, we are 
um, in terms of, as I talked to you earlier about um, helping to feed those in the convalescent homes, and we have three homes that we want to do. We're going to start with South River, but we also want to do Heritage Harbor, and we want to do um, the, the, the place in, um, in Crownsville. Um, and so this is the first one that we're going to do. Uh, we need for you to, for, for your donations to help us out with that, amen, and knowing that it, it's going straight to help those who are helping people who are in need, helping those who are on the front lines who are stepping into danger every single day to help the least, the lost, the less than, and the sick. And so, uh, as, I, as, I, as instructed last week, if you're going to write a check, uh, on your check, put C19 and add an additional $10. If you're paying electronically, um, you're going to have to, in the other category, just put other and put a $10 donation in. Uh, so that we can come together and we can help help feed those um, who are um, who are struggling. Amen. For those on Zoom, can you please put your your thing on, on mute? Um, and so, so we are going to um, uh, we're going to continue uh, to to try to do things in our community. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But I want to pray for our prayer, pray for our offering. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done and continue to do in our lives. Uh, we thank you, Lord God, because uh, for so many of us, we are truly blessed. Uh, we still have jobs. We are still working. We still have food on our table. We still have a roof over our head in the name of Jesus. And, and so truly, Lord God, we want to, to lift that up in prayer. And we just thank you and bless you and praise you, Lord God. So please be with us in this time as we, we write our offering check to the church and we will the honor and the praise and, and in fact help us to understand that we're not writing the offering to the church but we're writing it to our God who continues to guide gird and protect us this is our prayer in the awesome name of Jesus we pray and say amen 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 hallelujah um I have a few announcements um on May 8th Friday the May 8th we're gonna have another food distribution in Franklin United Methodist Church is going to start at 11 o'clock uh, we'll be distributing all kinds of vegetables and fruits. We need volunteers. If you would like to volunteer to help us, um, we need, we're going to need help from uh, 8.30 in the morning until probably th 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But if you if you're, can get off work and, and if you're not working and you're willing to come out, uh, contact Sister Tyra um, uh, from uh, St. Matthew's. And if you're from uh, Solars, contact Sister Sheila and just say if you'd like to come out. And we, we need to get a list of all of our volunteers so we'll know what we have. We will continue to have our call for prayer, uh, which will take place every uh, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, for those of you who have the call-in number, it's the same number that we're working on right now, so it'll be the same number every week. Um, following our service today, First Lady is going to be doing a um, uh, uh, Bible study. So we ask that you would uh, stay on. I'm around. <laughs> ask that you would stay on. Uh, it's going to start a little, 11 o'clock or a little bit afterwards, uh, but, but uh, she is a teacher, and you will be blessed if you stay with her. It's on uh, prayer. It's a, uh, she's it's doing a Bible study on prayer. Uh -huh. uh, and so, so it, it ties into the prayer. Um, this prayer helps us come to Jesus. It, it puts us in a position that we are uh, seeking God's face and coming to him. So uh, if you have some time, and y'all ain't doing nothing, but you have some time, because <laughs> y'all ain't, ain't going out to dinner, y'all ain't going to those morning boy <laughs> today. So if you have some time, stay on uh, and, and, um, and, have, and um, just, just really... Uh, bask in the lesson that First Lady is going to teach us. Uh, the one thing that I, I'm learning about electronic giving is, is that because we're not in church, it's easy to forget. So, so you need to write reminders down if you're going to be paying electronically. Write reminders down so that make sure that you pay. The easiest thing to do really is that you can set it up so that it will take the money out of your account every week or every two weeks, and then you you know you don't have to worry about it. But but um, it's not about the wording, it's about really giving and praying um, that, that, and thanking God uh, for what he has done. Amen. Uh, and so um, uh, that's about it for me. Uh, I, I want to pray before we leave uh, so that uh, we could leave on one accord. Uh, will you pray with me? What, one second before we start praying. Um, some people are asking if I'm going to do it on Facebook. I am, but I'm going to sign off this. So this is a, it's just the service and then I'm going to come back on for the uh, Bible study. So the Bible study will be up both on Zoom and on, and on, Facebook, and on Live. Facebook Live. Yes. Okay, okay. All right, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor and praise, and we thank you, Lord God. I, I, I thank you for everyone who, who joined us in the service this morning. I pray, Lord God, that your word touched someone. Hallelujah, that, that our rest is found in you. 
uh, in these turbulent times, Lord God, with so much madness going on around us, we thank you, Lord God, that we can come to you and find a peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I lift up our sick and our shut-in wherever they may be. For those who are in the convalescent home, a special prayer, Lord God, because we can't even visit them. Um, but Lord God, no matter where they are, you are there as well. So we ask that you would please be with them. We ask that you would touch and heal them, cover and protect them in the name of Jesus. For those who are sick and shut in in their homes, Lord God, and so many of them are able now to hear the service or see the service, Lord God, we ask that you would just continue to be with them and be their strength. I, I thank you, Lord God, for their caretakers in the name of Jesus. Yes. Uh, I, I pray a special prayer of strength for all of the caretakers, Lord God, those who are from the outside and those who are in family, Lord God. I ask that you would come and bless and cover and keep them in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father. Uh, and for those, Heavenly Father, wherever they may be, uh, we lift up the lost and the less than, Lord God, for there are those who we don't even know where they are. But, Lord God, we lift them up and ask that you would touch, cover, and please be with them in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father. For all of those who are in our sick and shut-in list, Heavenly Father, we lift them up. For those who are in recovery from surgery, we lift them up. Yes, For Lord. those who are in recovery from COVID-19, uh, we lift them up in the name of Jesus, Lord God, and thank you for healing and being with them in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would continue to give us wisdom and insight and knowledge, Lord God, that we would do what you have called us to do in this time, that we would be obedient and follow the law, Lord God, that has been placed before us, that is not that difficult, Lord God, just to stay inside as much as possible, keep our mask on and our gloves on and to wash our hands. In the name of Jesus, help us to do that, Lord God. But Lord God, in this time, it is my prayer in the name of Jesus that we come to you. We come to you asking, Lord God, what it is that I need to do. What change do I need to make in my yes. life? And for some of us, Lord God, we know the changes that we need to make and we need some help. Yes, but God. the one thing that you told us in the name of Jesus is that you sent your Holy Spirit to help us. So, Lord God, help us in the name of Jesus to be who you've called us to be. Help us, Lord God, that we might call all of those in our congregation, Heavenly Father, some of our, our, our elderly members, Lord God, let's call and check on them and yes. love on them, Lord God, that they might know that though they are not with us, they are in our hearts in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father. I, I pray, Lord God, that we call at least two or three people this week that we have not called in a long time and just let them know that you were thinking about them, Lord God, and that you love them. So, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for, for our churches. I thank you for everyone who is who is listening today, Lord God, continue to strengthen us and guide us and gird us and elevate us, Lord God, that we might be we might be better when this is over than we were when this started, Heavenly Father. We just bless your name and thank you for all of the blessings for keeping us sound and safe, Lord God. We, we thank all of those parents with their little children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless them in the name of Jesus. The children that are in the house when they're trying to work, Lord God, give them the patience <laughs> in the name of Jesus to do what they need to do. Love you, Lord. Uh, and, and through it all, let our lives not just be lip service to you. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, but let us surrender to you that you might guide us and gird us to do the things you've called us to do. So, Lord God, we just thank you. Hallelujah. We bless you. We praise you. Magnify you and glorify you. And please be with us throughout this day and this week until we meet again on Wednesday night, Lord God, and we'll give you the glory and the honor and the praise. And now to him who was able to keep us from falling. Yes. To the only wise God, hallelujah, be majesty, glory, and authority, Lord God. And we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that is at work within us, the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, that is our help so that your burden, that, that your yoke will be light and that our burdens will be taken away. Lord God, we declare on this day that we will come to you, that we might find our rest. This is our prayer. In the awesome name of Jesus, we pray. And let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. God bless you. Y'all hold on or sign back in to get First Lady. She's getting ready to start. I'm going to unmute everybody here.